All right, back to the uh, the G80S. Um, not sure what that stands for. <laughs> anyway, the G80S. Um, a uh, suspicion was that I had a bad uh, UART. Um, there seemed to be some tri-stated lines on it. I didn't quite understand. Uh, so uh, I ordered a new... Oh, and the other thing was that uh, the board was designed to run at 6 megahertz, and I had to buy a 4 megahertz crystal to see if it would run with this 4 megahertz uh, Z80 Dart. Um, so I bought a 6 megahertz part so I can run at 6 megahertz. I haven't put the 6 megahertz crystal in here yet. I'm still troubleshooting at 4 megahertz. Um, so we can go here to the uh, HP Logic Dart, which I just love now. Um, it's quite fun to play with, and it's... Uh, it's pretty convenient, you know, it has a built-in voltmeter, built-in um, logic analyzer, built-in logic level uh, troubleshooter, uh, built-in frequency counter. It, it is kind of a nice machine. Um, I think they probably were just a bit too late, you know, they 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 released these things in um, 1997, I believe, and it would have been the perfect tool in the 80s. I'm not sure it would have been the perfect tool in the 2000s. I mean, 97, by the time you got it out there, it was 98, 99. Um, I just don't, I think it was probably a bit dated. Uh, it was pricey and digital oscilloscopes were getting to be cheaper, so I just think it was a, a cool idea, but maybe a bit too late in execution. Anyway, I have 5 volts on the part. Uh, we can check here to see if we have any lines toggling. Um, hopefully you can see that. Oh, let me back out a bit here. I think you can see everything in that picture. So we have some lines toggling here. This is the uh, uh, ROM chip enable. That's flashing. Here's the RAM chip enable. That's flashing. And the UART, the DART chip enable, it's flashing. So it's talking to the uh, talking to the UART. Um, we can take a look now at the uh, transmit pin on this part, which is pin. Um, pin 15. So data should be coming out of pin 15. So uh, let's see here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. 15 should be this one here. And oh, it's flashing. That's interesting. Do I have the right thing here? Is that 14, 15, 14, 15. Oh, 15, 15 is toggling. That's interesting. Um, let's see here, let's do an auto scale. I don't think I'm on the right. I'm getting a squirrel wave on pin 15. That doesn't seem to be right. I can do a reset. Uh, let's see here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh yeah, that was pin 14. 14 is the uh, clock going into it. A clock going into it is uh, 1.8432, so that's what we're getting here. Hopefully, hopefully you can read that. The uh, lights aren't washing it out. So that's pin 14. Let's look at pin 15. Pin 15 is just sitting there, but it's sitting there high now. It was tri-stated, I think, last time. So if we hit the reset button, ah, it toggled, which did not do before. Yay. So let's put this in... Uh, Let's see here. We're sitting at a high. Let's go look for a high edge. Uh, let's do a single. Uh, let's see here. Edge. Rising edge. Single. Uh, I'm not triggering this right. Let me just move my needle lower. Let's see, edge follow. Let's see, let's do negative going. Oh, there we go. So we're getting, ooh, we're getting a lot of data. Oh, and it's changing. So it looks like it's actually transmitting data. So that's pretty cool. So I think it's operating much better than it used to. So it looks like we're getting digital data, not just a clock and not just something random, looks like actual bits changing. So, 
Uh, the Logic Dart done, has done its job, so let's change over to the old Rigel. I love my Rigel scope. Uh, I got one of those uh, scopes and you could hack it. So I hacked it, got it to go faster, and opened up all of the cool features it has. One of the cool features it has is uh, decoding. Uh, decoding data of different types. I've used it for decoding I squared C, and we'll use it today for decoding uh, RS-232. So, uh, you set the decoding by uh, math, let's see here, math, decode 1, decoder RS-232, decode is on, channel 1. You set the baud rate, which I know is 57600, so it's all set up to do that. So let's uh, see if we're getting any data here on pin 15. Let's hit the reset button and, oh, I saw some data fly by. So let's do a single capture. Uh, let's see, no, that's not the way to do it. I need to do run stop. Ah, I need to put it on normal triggering. Ah, let's see here. Let's put the, ah. the buttons are a bit finicky on the rival. Oh, there we go. So now it's waiting for something. If I'm going to hit the reset button. Oh, there we go. Data. Oh, looks like it said something. So let's zoom, zoom out. Let's take another snapshot. Ah, there we go. So this should be the sign on message. So we can zoom in. Ah, cool. And then you can see down here, carriage return line feed, carriage return line feed, carriage return line feed, escape. Uh, uh, let's see here. What does it say? It's saying strange things. Hmm. say anything too interesting. Maybe the so maybe I need to set up the RS-232 for number of bits and things like that. I uh, don't know how to do that. Uh, the character return line feeds look good though. Um, wow, this is great. Uh, so, before we go any further, Feed, character turn line feed. All right, so let's go up to the Maxim chip. That data line should appear on pin 10. Line 10. Oh, and it is not. Let's try pin 10 over here. It is not. So maybe that's the problem with my board. I'm not getting data across to the Maxim chip. That's kind of strange. Definitely getting it here on this uh, UART pin. Hmm. That's interesting. So let me show what I'm seeing down here. So when I look at pin 15 here on the UART chip, uh, that is trans, uh, the transmit out pin, and we're getting character turn line feeds at least out. Looks like real data. Um, that is the uh, that is this TXA on pin 15, TXDA, TXA. And TXA should come into IC4 pin 10. 
and IC4. Uh, I'm not sure which one's IC4. I think that probably says underneath the chips. But it's either that one or that one. <laughs> and these are 16 pin devices, so pin 10 is 8, the second one over. And I do not see. Let's use the logic dart over here. Hook the ground lead back up. Okay. Pin 15. Okay, I get data. Pin. 10 over here, no data, and 10 over here, no data. Interesting. So, let's uh, look at this board. Let's uh, do a continuity test between the two. Uh, I'm using my DVM. Okay, here's uh, pin 15, and I do not get any continuity. Hmm. Okay, pin 15 goes over to here. Comes up here to one of these. Ah, maybe I'm a bad... A bad via. Or maybe several bad vias, that'd be a bummer. But I do not see data on the back side of the board. Hmm. Maybe a jumper is a bodge wire is needed. Interesting. Let me uh investigate that more off camera and uh see if that's the issue. Okay, well, um, pin 15 now goes to pin 10, which is where it should go. Get that buzz. And then the receive pin, which is pin 9 over here, pin 9 should go to 12. So this is 15, 14, 13, 12. 12 goes to 9. So, I claim we fixed it. So, uh, let's hook it up to a uh, terminal and see if we get data out. Okay, well, I got it to say an actual message. Space, D capital D O U G, Doug. <laughs> so, I think, uh, I think I've got it working now. Um, I think I need to put in that jumper and uh, get the data going to the chip and then we'll move it to um i had problems with it i had to take the jumper off and anyway i don't want to go through that on camera but uh, i'll put the jumper back on and we'll take it into uh, the terminal emulator and uh, hopefully we can get it uh, displaying a message on the terminal emulator yay yay we're okay <laughs> anyway i hope this long set of videos has helped you guys out um, showing you uh, methods of troubleshooting, uh, looking at tri-stated lines, assuming th some things good, some things are bad, um, going back to basics, making sure the clocks are correct, uh, making sure that the speed of your chips are the right. You know, don't use a six megahertz chip if you're using a six four megahertz uh, crystal, or I mean, uh, vice versa, a four megahertz part when you're using a six megahertz crystal. Um, and uh, and then assume uh, something might be bad. So uh, we probed everything. We we found a tri-stated pin. We assumed a bad part. We got a new part. The pin wasn't tri-stated. Um, we probed the pin, and we were getting good signals. So then we went to the oscilloscope, which had uh, RS-232 decoding. We got a message there saying it looks like things were good. We were not getting any uh data to the maximum 232 chip so 
maybe the chip is bad. No, there's no data getting to the pin. So it must be a broken trace or a bad solder joint, a cold solder joint. Checked all those out. Looked as though there's a missing via. So we put in a bodge wire on the back and um, here we are. It seems to be working. So let's write a program. Hello. Oh, that one worked. Okay. Print. I'm sorry, guy. Victoria is mine, maybe. <laughs> 20, go to 10. Done. Yay! <laughs> Finally. Oh, well, Doug will be so proud. <laughs> so I got his board working. Um, so now I need to figure out what's wrong with my uh, 8085 board, which has similar problems. Um, don't know what's going on. I doubt that there's another missing via, but who knows? Very nice. Um, so I did want to let everybody know uh, who uh, wants to go build this board. There is a patch. Um, so uh, the tiny basic program uh, had a bug in it. And so the patch was released. So if you go to Retro Depot, you can download the latest ROM version. And it is this uh, patch one. So make sure you get the patch and uh, build your own retro Z80 tiny basic computer.